टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अ टॉपिक रिलेटेड टू ट्रांजिएंट हीट कंडक्शन दैट इज ट्रांजिएंट हीट कंडक्शन इन सेमी इनफाइनाइट सॉलिड्स यू माइट हैव हर्ड अबाउट कंडक्शन इन इनफाइनाइटली लॉन्ग पैरेलल वॉल्स बट व्हाट इज कंडक्शन इन सेमी इनफाइनाइट सॉलिड लेट्स टेक अ सॉलिड वॉल दिस वॉल इज बाउंडेड एट एक्स इज इक्वल टू जीरो एंड इनफाइनाइटली लॉन्ग इन पॉजिटिव एक्स कॉर्डिनेट एंड बोथ डायरेक्शन ऑफ वाई इन जेड कॉर्डिनेट This idealized body is what we call a semi-infinite solid because it extends to infinity in all directions except one which can be characterized by a single identifiable surface. But no such object exists in the real world which is infinitely long. So what does it mean? Let's take a surface which is finite in one direction x and infinite in other x direction and other coordinates. Now if we apply heat on the finite side we will observe that the heat is being conducted only up to certain distance after a certain interval of time so if a body is very large in one direction then beyond a critical distance heat conduction is not significant for the time duration then the body can be assumed to be semi infinite this idealized body is used to indicate that the temperature change in part of the body which is close to the surface is due to the thermal conditions on a single surface Let's take a practical example of such a case. Let's say we have a ground and it's summer season. We want to bury some underground pipes to supply water or any fluid to the city. After some time, winter arrives. During the winter, the air temperature remains below 0 degrees Celsius for a prolonged periods of time, which can cause freezing of water in the underground pipes and is a major concern. Fortunately, the soil remains relatively warm during those periods. and it takes weeks for the sub freezing temperatures to reach the water mains in the ground thus the soil effectively serves as an insulation let's say we know the winter season remains for 3 months so what should be the minimum burial depth to prevent the water pipes from freezing for a duration of 3 months so in this case your ground is a semi infinite solid because we are only concerned with the conduction up to a critical depth from the surface and for a duration of time beyond that we can assume the ground to be infinite in other direction let's look at the formulation part we have a surface which is bounded in one x direction and infinitely long in other directions so we can write the governing equation as 3d transient heat conduction equation where alpha is the thermal diffusivity given by thermal conductivity divided by the product of density and specific heat capacity now we have some assumptions here assumption 1 is thermal conductivity k is constant in all directions second there is no heat generation inside the solid and third conduction in y and z directions are not significant so we can neglect the temperature gradients in y and z direction therefore we get a transient one dimensional heat conduction equation this is a type of initial boundary value problem we have a initial condition at time equal to 0 t is equal to ti and a boundary condition at x is equal to 0 t is equal to t not this transient conduction in semi infinite solid is little different from the case of 1d transient conduction between two parallel plates in the infinite parallel plate problem the distance between the parallel plates is fixed say l but in case of semi infinite solid we are considering this length l to be infinite length in the direction of x but we don't know what the length l should be to claim it to be infinite let's do a order of magnitude analysis to get a idea about it we can write del t by del t as delta t by delta t and alpha del 2 t by del x square as alpha delta t by x reference square where x reference is the distance over which the thermal effect is felt so x reference we can write as root alpha t ref where t ref we can call as the reference time now length scale is related to the time scale not fixed like the parallel wall problem we can define a non dimensional length as x by x ref equal to x by root of alpha t 
We did this because we will see later that the solution of this problem will uniquely depend on this ratio. That is, if we keep this ratio fixed, the non-dimensional solution will remain invariant. Now we introduce a similarity variable eta, which is a function of x, that is space, and gt, which is a function of time. We can see here, we can write x by root of alpha t as x into 1 by root of alpha t. So gt is actually 1 by root of alpha t. But how do we know that gt is of this form? Let's see mathematically. As you know, separation of variable is a method by which you can write a variable as a product of two variables which are function of space and time. Express the left side of the transient heat conduction equation in terms of the similarity variable eta by writing del t by del t as dt by d eta into del eta by dt using chain rule. So on further simplifying it we get x g dash dt by d eta where g dash is actually del g by del t. Similarly for the right side we can write del t by del x as dt by d eta into del eta by del x. On further simplifying we get g dt by d eta. Now on double derivating it del 2 t by del x square we get g square d 2 t by d eta square as the final result. Now we put this back into our 1D transient heat conduction equation. We get an equation of this form. As we know eta is equal to x into g t, we can write the x on the left hand side as eta by g. On further simplifying and separating the variables of eta and g on other sides, we get on the left hand side the terms which are function of eta and on the right hand side the function of t. So here left hand side is equal to right hand side only when this is equal to a constant c1. We first solve the right hand side g dash by alpha g cube equal to c1. Now separating the values of g on one side we get g minus power 3 dg is equal to c1 alpha dt. On integrating this we get g minus 2 by minus 2 equal to c1 alpha t plus c2. So we saw before that x by x ref is equal to x into g t. So from here we know that x ref is inversely proportional or equal to 1 by g t. We have a boundary condition that as t tends to 0, x ref tends to 0 because heat is still at the surface where heat is applied. It has not propagated yet. So from this we can get that gt will tend to infinity as x ref tends to 0. So using this we will get c2 constant value equal to 0 and gt is equal to 1 by root of minus 2 c1 alpha t. So this is of the same form as we have assumed earlier that gt is equal to 1 by alpha t. Now here c1 has to be taken negative because gt is a positive term. And for simplification, we can take c1 is equal to minus 2. So finally, we will get gt is equal to 1 by 2 root of alpha t. Now let's see the left hand side. d2t by d eta square by eta dt by d eta equal to minus 2. If we rearrange this, we get d2t by d eta square plus 2 eta dt by d eta equal to 0. Now let's assume dt by d eta equal to f. So we get df by d eta plus 2 eta f equal to 0. Now if we separate the variables, we get df by f equal to minus 2 eta d eta. Integrating it, we get ln f equal to minus eta square plus ln c3. So f is equal to c3 to the power minus eta square. Now putting the value of f dt by d eta on the left hand side we get dt by d eta equal to c3 e to the power minus eta square. So dt is equal to c3 e to the power minus eta square d eta. On integrating both sides we get t is equal to c3 integration 0 to eta e to the power minus eta square d eta plus c4. Now we have to find the value of the constant c4 and c3. So from a boundary condition at x is equal to 0 we know t is equal to t naught. So eta is a function of x and gt. So eta at eta 0 
we also get t is equal to t naught so from this we get c4 equal to t naught also we know as t tends to 0 eta tends to infinity and from the boundary condition we know that at t is equal to 0 t is equal to ti for all x so at eta equal to infinity t is also equal to ti now we have to get the value of the integral 0 to eta e to the power minus eta square d eta let eta square is equal to y then eta is equal to y to the power half and d eta equal to 1 by 2 y to the power minus half dy now if we substitute the value of eta and d eta in the integral we get 1 by 2 integral 0 to the infinity e to the power minus y y power minus half dy so this is the type of gamma function we 1 by 2 gamma bracket 1 by 2 so we get the value root of pi by 2 on putting this value we get ti is equal to c3 root of pi by 2 plus t naught on rearranging we get c3 is equal to 2 by root of pi into ti minus t naught now putting the value of the constants we get t equal to 2 by root of pi ti minus t naught into integral 0 to eta e to the power minus eta square d eta plus t naught so t minus t naught by t i minus t naught is equal to 2 by root of pi 0 to eta e to the power minus eta square d eta this is known as the error function eta this function represents a normal distribution in statistics we can also write this in a different way we can subtract 1 from both sides then we get t minus t i by t naught minus t i is equal to 1 minus error function of eta so this can be written as a complementary error function let's see some physical insight related to this solution of this problem at x equal to 0 t is equal to t naught here you can see t2 is greater than t1 so you allow more time greater length of the solid feels the thermal distance when the curves comes to the ti there is some critical distance x beyond this distance the solid does not feel the temperature or heat imposed at the surface of the solid so when the solid thickness is very much greater than this distance it can be considered as a semi-infinite solid so it depends on the time duration that is being considered like for the second curve critical distance is more as time duration is more in this case therefore any thickness beyond the critical distance at which the thermal distance is not felt can be considered to be infinite if you like this video kindly like and subscribe and keep watching for more interesting videos